Dying Light 2 is back with a new update, but is it better than Dead Island 2? Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone! I'm the Global Chair and today we will be talking about a new Dying Light 2 update, as well as debate whether it beats Dead Island 2. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! This is a good update, I can feel it in my gut, literally. <laughs> After watching people slay zombies in Hell A, Techland seemed to be influenced by Dead Island 2 and adopted new changes of their own. Their gut feeling update is what brings the community back to Villador, as it tackles gore with 100 improvements, making the combat more satisfying. You can take your anger out in a healthy manner by dismembering your enemies, hacking their limbs, cutting them in half, and enjoy seeing every single detail of damage you do to them, like a zombie's skeletal structure or its brains. Techland has also made adjustments to sound design, enabling the infected and people to react with different noises to your hits, such as hissing from damaged lungs, did a blunt force. You can brutally cut volatiles in half or create a domino effect, like a goon knocking another biter with its hammer, which sets another infected on fire. If you're a percentage related to me, now is probably a good time to click off. In an RPG game, have you ever found a bunch of gear pieces, but when you wear all the pieces you look like a randomized sim character? Well, thanks to gear transmog in Dying Light 2. You can wear your gear, keep the stats, and look stylish at the same time. Techland has also added a new weapon crafting system that allows pilgrims like yourself to find and upgrade 37 blueprints throughout Villador from secret locations or quest locations. Through a craft master, you can also upgrade those blueprints and increase the rarity of your weapons with more mod slots, durability, and more. Like this thingamabob? That's a strange name. Two of the blueprints are in the Rahim bundle and the Gunslinger bundle. Bundle. The Rahim bundle comes with two outfits as well as his character. There are also new bundles called the Post Apple bundle and the Night Runner bundle. The Viral Rush event is still ongoing from April 20 to May 4, where you can test brutal physicality as you're swarmed by hordes of viral infected. Some types of virals look more human like and explode in green mist, or leave a small pool of toxic liquid behind them. Imagine the challenge of ensuring your immunity does not hit zero, and attacking virals at the same time with a head stomp or a machete. More zombies are in dying light like banshees. Volatiles are also more sensitive to noise so watch out for them at night. Does your Aiden have no home? Spike has survived the X-13 missiles and is introducing the Pilgrim Outpost for you as your own safe haven. It's hot time you arrived. You can rest, refill supplies, refine weapons, craft exclusive weapons, items, or specialized tools, and activate bounties. While achieving all the bounties, you'll advance your reputation rank, allowing you to receive Pilgrim Tokens. You'll use the Pilgrim Tokens to spend on various goods like in-game loot boxes, skins, and much more. One bounty refreshes every day, and another bounty refreshes every week. The bounties are divided into four categories, combat, equipment, movement, and other. And there are six bounties available every week. You can complete bounties in Dying Light to earn rewards in Dying Light 2. And the other way around is applied. What are you waiting for? Get to the outpost, Pilgrim! Get to the outpost, Pilgrim. There's also the hotfix update 1.10.2 with changes like co-op players no longer getting stuck on the please wait communication error, number of enemies from viral rush, no longer blocking story progression, fixing an issue with mods, weapon slots, the far jump skill, game crashes, and other changes. Although Dying Light 2 has gotten better, here's an important question. Does it beat Dead Island 2? Seriously, tell me because I want to know. To simplify Dead Island 2, you play as one of six slayers to survive a zombie apocalypse in iconic locations within Los Angeles. Each of these playable characters have unique personalities, quips, and their dialogue. Some of them are Bruno, a hustler, Danny, a retail assistant who hates her family, Ryan, an exotic dancer, Amy, a competitive athlete, and Jacob. Well, Jacob is a goner. Wait, wait, shit, shit, shit! Ah! I'm kidding, he's also a cool character. You survive a plane crash as one of the six slayers, definitely not because of plot armor. Then you get bitten because you decided to go help that nice growling lady over there. <gasps> And now you have hybrid zombie powers, kind of like Dying Light 2. Then you realize you're immune and skip around Hele looking for people and killing zombies in attempts to form a plan to escape Los Angeles. There'll be many surprises in the City of Angels. You know you got all like blood coming out of your ears. What? I can't hear you! I got blood coming out of my ears! Well 
I think his ears are bleeding. Dying Light 2 and Dead Island 2 provide different gameplay experiences to people and have their strengths. Dying Light 2 focuses on the traversal aspect of its open world game, allowing you as Aiden to parkour around Villador freely. Dead Island 2 does have limited locations, but the unique areas are well contained with Beverly Hills, Venice Beach, Hollywood Boulevard, and other locations. Both games are vibrant, colorful, and beautiful, but they do provide a different atmosphere. For Dying Light 2, Villador is colorful but lifeless as no life exists on the ground, but a life is built on the rooftops. In Hell A, well, everything looks lively except the zombies. Dying Light 2 focuses on its storyline with decisions and consequences, despite lackluster writing from time to time. Although I really did enjoy playing as Aiden Caldwell, going on his pilgrim journey and upgrading skills on the skill tree to get him to do awesome parkour. I like the Dead Island 2 characters too, but it's mostly because of the skill cards and abilities they possess. Sam B will always be my favorite Dead Island character no matter what. It's a no-brainer. No pun intended. Dead Island 2 may have a mid-story on the outside, but it does offer a fun and over-the-top experience for their players, especially with their flesh system, allowing the game to be as gory as possible. You can see your bloody fleshy masterpiece in clear detail, and it's somewhat horrific, but you can't look away. Their variety of zombies is also pretty impressive as well. Scared of clowns? Deep Silver will rekindle that fear by giving you a zombie clown. No! Climbing on the ride! Scared of Bridezillas? Dance with the Bride Zombie! Oh. <laughs> In terms of parkour, Dying Light 2 wins this category because of how much variety you can get for parkour moves. You can kind of do the same in Dead Island 2 with the dropkick, but it's not as strong as Dying Light 2. How can I find enjoyment in dropkicking when my enemies don't fly to space? Dead Island 2 has a way of allowing you to use the environment to your advantage against your opponents. I think the combat in Dead Island 2 is equally as good as Dying Light 2. You can also put workbench customization into action and add many weapon mods to upgrade your weapons and give status effects, which I can see Dying Light 2 trying to do. You also have innate zombie powers by activating Fury Mode in Dead Island 2, while in Dying Light 2 you would only see those special abilities in the cutscenes or a few sections in the game. In this case, Aiden was trying to stay human, otherwise the game would be Dying Light B Zombie. Both games also have co-op, so you'll be able to enjoy both universes with your friends. So I'm not going to diss both games, because I do like and enjoy both of them. These two games are great, but I believe they could influence one another. I could see Dying Light 2 being influenced by Dead Island 2, as they made changes to the game prior to Dead Island 2's release, and more changes are being done currently. I also believe Dead Island 2 could learn from Dying Light 2 as well. Why fight each other when you can learn from each other? She was a Dead Island 2 girl, he was a Dying Light 2 boy. So what game is the winner for you? Are you still on Villador's side, or are you on Team Hell A? Comment down below and your reason why. That is all for today, if you enjoyed the video please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching, and that's all.